Hey there everyone, so today's video is focusing on pivot tables. I had a request to show a couple more videos on this. I'm going to go through mostly how to change the values and then how to make sense of it once you do that in a pivot table. The data set you see in front of you is probably not too different than ones we've used before. It came from Little Rock's data portal. I did go ahead and clean it up. With that you can see incident date to the long date. We have day of the week, month, year, hour of the day already pulled out. I did filter and limit this data set to only ag assault and homicide from 2017 through 2021. Doing a project with a colleague, Dr. Casey Harris, on this in Little Rock and looking at essentially the stability or movement of violence over the 2020-2021 year when we saw the increases in Little Rock and also nationwide. So we want to do a bit more spatial temporal analysis on it. With that, we also have some other indicators or variables within it. We have a weapon type, the location. I was trying to make sense of the incident status before I did this video, even online when they had their essentially code book to click through. It does not give a meaning for each one of these, so I'm going to follow up with the City of Little Rock LRPD to see if I can get a just a quick breakdown of this because that will help. Essentially, those are going to be exceptionally cleared, arrest made, open, and some other options within it, but I'll have those within this at some point. So we can do a lot with that information once we know if an arrest was made or not. So the key part to start, since I am going to use all the data, I click on cell A1, control shift, down arrow right, highlighting the entire data set here, come up to the insert tab at the top, and we'll have the option to insert a pivot table. With that, it's going to go to a new worksheet for me. I already have the data set highlighted, so we're good to go there. Hit OK. I get in the habit of just automatically renaming when I do a pivot and I usually move it to the right and that's just personal preference, but you can do it that way and you can just double click on the actual text to change it. So an easy way to start and say I'm interested in, we know that there's homicide and ag assault. So let's just start there. So if we come down to offense description, I'm going to put them as columns. So you can see here we have ag assault and murder, non negligent manslaughter, i.e. homicide. With that, to start off, we just want to get a count for each one right now. So with that, we know every incident in here has an incident number attached. So we want just to count that. So we're going to drop that down into our values. And we can see from 2017 through 2021, there were 13,690 ag assaults and 236 homicides. Good place to start out. What we can next do if we want to break it down by year then is drop our row or year into the row column. We can see what that looks like by year. And this is why I say it's interesting to see then in 2020 and 2021, because we see an increase in both ag assault and homicide for both of those years. We want to see what that looks like spatially and temporally to see if it's the same areas or places seeing those increases or where that's happening in Little Rock. But you can see here, that's an easy way to break it down. Again, these are just counts but there's a couple different ways you could show or display this data. The ones that we went over in class were percent of total. That could be row or column total. So with that, I'm gonna go over an example of how to do this one way, change up a couple variables, and then show it another way. The way we went over in class is when we have a count, we click on here, we go into value field settings. We still wanna count, but we wanna to show the value as a percentage so it has no calculation right now we're going to show you if I do column total we're going to go through this and what it means for that oops there we go click OK and we can see now when we're going down this is what adds up to a hundred percent both ways it's percent of column so if we're looking at this this is making sense of Agasol in 2017. You had the greatest percentage in year 2021, followed by 2020. You can see here how they're added up. Same for murder or homicide. <clears throat> the largest year again was 2021 with 26%, almost 27% of those five years. Again, when you do column total, look at your column headers. That's how you make sense of the 100% which way it's going. So if you look across, say, for 2017 of row total, you see that it does not add up to 100%. So if I change this, if I came back into, oops, our value field settings, still have it as a count, but I want to change how it's shown as a row total, hit OK. 
you would read this in 2017, about 98% of these incidents were ag assault, and about 2% were murder or homicide ones themselves, and that's why they add up to 100% that way. This ends up being an average going down on the column, so you can see what it looks like that way. Again, keep in mind if you're doing a row total, you read across, and that's how you get to the 100%. If you've taken a social stats class, this is similar to what you'd build up to a cross tabs, leading to a chi-square test for significance where you can compare the observed versus the expected. This is just kind of an easy way to understand data in Excel. There are options in Excel to do the stats. If you go into data and you have this data analysis tool pack installed, you do have the ability to run some tests for significance in here. All right. So this is one way to just break down a quick pivot table to understand the distribution of ag assault and homicide across those five years. Now, since we know what's going on those, you might not be interested in years at all, or you might just wanna look at one year. So to do that, if we move year up to filter, again, it just pops up here. So we see that it's all, so that gives us the five-year option. If we wanna just select one year, we can select 2021. If you wanted to do two years, you just check the box down here and select multiple. But for now, let's just look at calendar year 2021. Click OK. You can see we're still in percentages here. So if you want to ever change it back, you can come back into your value field settings, change show as, and just say no calculation. So we're back to truly counts. With that, you might be interested then in what type of weapon was used in this. And you can see if you're looking through the different options in it, you have multiple types of firearms in it, shotguns, rifle, that kind of thing. We also have blank. What we do in class and just get in the habit of, you can always uncheck the blank option. So if we come down, just uncheck that, that's gonna go away for us in the total updates because of that. So now, again, if we wanna read this in terms of row or column percent total, we did go through the show value as. You can also right click if you have any one of these cells selected, right click and say show values as. And I want to do column total. Oh, percent of column total. And you can see, so for ag assault, we had 30, about 31, 32% involved a firearm, another 23 to 20, yeah, 23% included a handgun. If we get into other firearm, it's just under a percent. Rifle, it's just about two to three percent, and shotguns just under a percent as well. So that's how you would read across. So ag assault in 2021, we're looking at weapon use, comes down this way, so you'd read it that way. Similar to our homicide, you can see here that just between fire and handgun coded, we're looking about 78, 79%. Add in other firearm, which is next to nothing, and then rifle, shotgun, and you're looking about over 80% of the homicides in 2021 involve some type of firearm itself. Again, just reading down this column here for the murder, non-negligent manslaughter, you read it this way, downwards. The other option again, just how we switched it up before, we can also switch it to say show as and just row total. Again, if we're looking at handgun here, we can see that out of all the incidents between ag assault and homicide that involved a handgun, 98% were ag assault, about one to 2% were homicide itself. So again, you're looking at row totals versus column. That's how the interpretation changes. When you're looking at row, you're going across, specifically for only incidents that involved a handgun itself. Again, you can always change these back to say, show as, and go no calculation, it divs it back to count. This is where, if you remember, you could do the conditional formatting to where it has different colors associated with it. So if I changed and I took weapon type out, just removed, put year back down here, but I wanna take the filter off of year, so I'm just gonna go in and say clear. It's gonna bring everything up. So if you remember the conditional formatting, if I highlight the data for ag assault that I'm interested in, this is a little different than what we did before of just highlighting everything. This one's just going to be column specific, conditional formatting, color scale. Red is the high one here. So you can see where these rank that way. So if you had more years, same thing for homicide. Red will identify the high peak point for it. Then orange, yellow, 
a lighter green to dark green, which is our lowest value. So it's an easy way to identify your peak periods, for our case, ag assault and homicide, a nice easy way to display the data with that. Another idea is if you ever want to use this data in another fashion, say a table, anything else, pivot tables do allow you to make tables out of it, so I'm not going to get harp on that too much, but you can, where it says row labels, you can change that to year. Where it has count of incidents, I just put a blank space there. In column labels, I just put incident type. So you can type over these. It gives you the option to do that. Now you also have the ability to, in your pivot table part, to add an actual chart. We haven't gotten into this, but we will be shortly. So if we get into a combo chart, and I want both of these to be a line, change that one to a bar. You can't see it too well, but it's an easy way to add it. We can always select out, so say I wanted to only look at one offense description type, I can take out the murder part for it and just show what ag assault looks by year. You can see it shifted it over to a bar chart for us. You can still change it based on design options to change chart type. If you want to go back to a line chart, you can just click OK. You can see that, and this is where you're getting the habit. Obviously, I like to go dark scale with it. You can easily right click on this line once you have those five highlighted and just hit Add Data Labels. And you can see the actual count per year and that increase with it. We'll also be able to add a secondary data set, or if we do a secondary axis, where you had homicide on this side to where you can see your percent of total to what that looks like. And you can, they're not as far apart in terms of the scale of this. But a quick refresher of some pivot tables, how to change it back and forth from percent of column versus total. And what we'll get into next is turning our pivot tables into usable charts that you can update as you want and continue to use going forward. So it's a nice way to view your data with it. So here we go. When I say a secondary axis, and we'll get into this, so I'm clicking pretty cl quickly, but in chart tap, I came down to combo. So we'll have our ag assault as our bar is here. And then we'll have murder and our homicide as a line based on a secondary axis that's on the right side. So you'll see here, the columns are based off of this left-hand side and our homicides based on the right side. You can kind of see how these trend together. That's all I really wanted to show is when you see ag assault changing, you also see homicide. Keep in mind, these can be somewhat interchangeable. A homicide could have been an ag assault that was more deadly, and an ag assault could potentially be a homicide that wasn't as deadly, which I just said, or a homicide could be an ag assault that was more deadly. Sorry, I got those mixed up in my head. So with that, we'll cover this more in class. If you have additional questions, please let me know. If not, enjoy.